everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and guess what? I still got uh, thumb uh, bandages on. So today I'm going to be answering some of your crafty questions from the YouTube channel uh, because I was attempting to do something, and I, I, I can't. Apparently, I can't craft at all with these these uh, bandages on. Um, so I'm all fumble fingers. I can't even do like tiny maneuvers and I can't pick anything up off my desk. So we're going to do some talking today, but I thought I'd entertain you with a couple things. Like I'm going to be, uh, my version of fussy cutting out some, uh, digi kits, uh, while I'm answering some questions. So you have something to watch. Okay. We'll see how far I get. <laughs> okay. So the first question comes from Noella Hicks and, uh, she asks, have you got a video on how you make your journals? Yes, yes, I do, Noella. I have a whole bunch, and they are found on. Um, I have a playlist called Junk. Uh, it's called Journal Constructions, Covers, and Spines, I believe. And um, this is not always easy or obvious uh, to for folks to find. So I think I'm actually going to take this out. I'm going to show you how to find it. Okay, so here, let's go. I'm just going to. I'm holding my phone here. Um, I'm going to open up YouTube. Okay, YouTube, open. That's just regular YouTube. There it is. Now let's go to, let's just type in in the search, the paper outpost. And, um, okay, so now you see that funny face. That's me. Click on the words, the paper outpost. That's going to take you to my channel page, okay? And on my channel page, you're going to see something, um, called playlists. What you want to do is click on that. Click on playlists and then you're going to scroll down. Okay, now this is all my playlists. These are all my playlists and you're going to find a category called, let's see if we can find it. These are all my playlists. Not that many, but there's a bunch. Okay, looking, looking, looking. Junk journal construction. There it is right there. That's what it looks like. Um, now, you, if you click on the title, I think that will automatically launch the first video or you can just view the full playlist and decide which one you want to look at. So let's click on that. Okay, I clicked. Now you're going to, here's one ready to start, but here's the list. And this one, you can see when you see the same picture, that means there's multiple parts to that particular little uh, video series. Um, but you can look down and see all the different videos on how to uh, create a junk journal, either from an old book or from scratch, uh, soft cover, hard cover, small books, uh, big books, um, all sorts. So you're going to have whatever journal you feel like making that day, you're probably going to find an instructional video here on how to actually make that journal. So yes, there you go. There's the answer to that one. Okay, great. Now I'm going to put you back in your little special place. Hold on. Okay, we're back over here. And I haven't cut out a thing yet, but I got the first question answered. So we're going to go on to the next question. Uh, I think it's, you say it, Shaban, Shaban, Irish is her name. And she said, Pam, are you sure the title of this series should be Never Endless? Oh, okay. So this is where I'm going to get nailed. I'm going to get nailed to the cross here because I used a double negative. You watch, here it comes. Okay. And you're so right. You're absolutely right. Okay. Maybe it's not, I haven't read the question yet. <laughs> I could run into trouble here. Okay. Endless means something will never end. So never endless technically means, well, she, she, she said, there is definitely an end coming. I'm thinking you really meant to say something like never ending page ideas or even endless page ideas. Sigh. Now I can watch, she said. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I have no leg to stand on with that. So I will cut a digi kit. That's all I can do. Um, you know, all I can say is sometimes the ideas are flying and thought goes out the window. It's kind of like with measuring, it goes right out the window. Okay, so, okay, here we go. And, uh, do, okay, Jean Olson asks, does the poem have to be from 1920 or before? What about copyright? Uh, good question. I did a, a video recently on the power of poems and different ways to use it in a journal. And um, I am not a copyright expert and refer to your copyright lawyers to technically get the correct answer to this disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. But in my uh, understanding of it, it's that the problem with copyright comes in when you copy something. So if you use the original, you're generally okay. But if you scan it, copy it, and want to use it over and over again, that's when uh, the copyright question comes into play. Because you're actually uh, um, 
you know, benefiting from if, and then it only comes into play if you sell it. Like, let's say you're at home and you want to copy a bunch of pictures from a book and you want to make uh, a journal for your Aunt Sally. You're not selling it. You're just gifting it to her. Uh, as far as I understand, there's no problem with copyright there. It's only if you sell it and only if you scan and copy it to sell it. Okay, now, that being said, as, what, as far as I understand, um, it also depends on where you live. Uh, your location. Different countries have different rules for copyright and um, it also <clears throat> depends what is it. Is it a photograph? Is it a, um, a written thing? Like there's all sorts of weird copyright rules out there but there's some general belief that if uh, things are there's a moving target and there's a general belief that if things are at least a hundred years old you're probably safe um, <clears throat> but I would check the individual item just to make sure. And there are, you know, sites on the web that you can go ahead and check copyright, uh, things. It's a little complicated and fussy pants, but once you get in the role with it and you're used to doing it, it's not that huge of a deal, but it does take some research and stuff. If, um, art that you make your own, you never have to worry about. You own the copyright to that. You can scan your own art and copy your own art and put it in um, your work as many times as you like. That's why I try and encourage people to um, pick up a pencil, pick up a paintbrush. Don't be afraid to create your own art. It can be a lot of fun and um, uh, you don't ever have to sweat about copyright. Um, also, um, if you start understanding certain things, like a lot of the images and the pictures that you see that I use, um, in my digi kits are very, very old images, like uh, off, I mean, some of them are from the 1600s. And um, so I'm pretty sure that the copyright is gone with some of those, but you definitely want to do your research and you want to be sure before you sell something. So um, just make sure. Um, I hope that helps. I know that's always a concern out there. I don't want to um, be giving too much advice on copyright because I, I am not an expert. I just, uh, um, I just want to keep you guys safe and d that you're doing the right thing out there. But uh, as far as I understand, if you use the original, um, you should be okay now. Yeah, I, that would be like if you wanted to use the Mona Lisa, you'd have to use the original. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, actually, Mona is pretty old, so she's probably out of copyright. So there you go. Um, but copyrights, you think it's old, but then it can also be renewed. Like if you have a family member that comes along and uh, renews something, like I think that the... The Edith Holden stuff, I believe the copyright is now held by a family member. So I think she reactivated it. I don't, don't quote me on this, but I think that's what I read somewhere. So I, when I use Edith Holden stuff, I like to use the actual pages from the book in, in the decorating because I think that's that's the better way to go. And uh, um, okay, so uh, next question we have. Does the poem... Ha oh, we, we did that one. Okay, that was Jean Olson. Okay, great question, Jean. Um, Sandra Samard asks, oh, where did you get your blue butterfly paper in that book? It's beautiful. It was when you were looking for another page for a tuck. The beautiful butterfly paper. Um, I don't have the video open in front of me, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure which beautiful blue butterfly paper that was. But if it, it she, you might be, who is this? This is Sandra Samard, yes. You might be referring to, where did I get an example of it somewhere? Here. Was it something like this? These are my new signature pages. Um, they're new di digi kits that I made that have uh, blue butterflies on them. And um, what I like to do with those is print them out on regular printer paper or copy paper, and that way they're the right thickness of a page for a junk journal. And you're off and running. There you go. Oh, I got that done. Look at how that happened. I, I need to maybe talk more and cut more. Okay, so get some of these cut. Okay. Uh, this is a purple vintage theme one. Yes, got to cut that one out like that one. Okay, here we go. Um, where can we get the stencil? Huh. Again, I don't have the video open. She's referring to my poems one. Um, now I'm assuming, I don't know if I, um, if I used the tree stencil. Everybody asks about that one. I have a tree, it's like a tree branches and um, I put a, a link to it in my Amazon shop. Because uh, I get asked about that one a lot. And I, there's the negative and the positive of the tree branch one there. So if you're looking for that one, it's in there. There are some other stencils in my shop. But basically when I get stencils, uh, what I do is I, I, I go on eBay 
uh, unless I got them from a thrift store or something, but I go on eBay and I put in leaf stencil or whatever it is I want, and then I go price lowest to highest, and I just start scrolling backwards, and I look to see the design I want, and then I try and find the best price. Often, um, you'll find multiple sellers for the same stencil, so make sure you look through them and get a good price for yourself, and often they sell them in batches. There are some fancier stencil companies, like the Tree Branch one, uh, they charge a, whoops, that was the wrong spot. Uh, they charge a little more for their stencils, but if you get a stencil that you absolutely love, like I, I use my tree stencil a lot, um, I, I, I see justification in those pennies spent in that direction because you, if you know you're going to use it a lot, um, and uh, but you know the worst stencil to get is the one you never use. Yeah, don't buy stencils just for the sake of buying them because they are like potato chips. Next thing you know, you'll be shopping stencils and you'll have like a thousand, and. Uh, I have a paper bag, a grocery bag full of stencils, and uh, I, I love using my stencils, but I've got so many, um, they're hard to see, like when I'm rooting through there, so if anybody knows any great way to store stencils, I've heard of one way I think I might want to try, and it's um, like putting them on a ring clip, uh, uh, but um, I don't know if that's going to be too fussy to get them apart. I like grab and go, and anything that slows me down, I'm not going to use, so if you got any great ideas, let me know, because I, I need to know. Maybe I should use them as wall art and just pin them up with uh, thumbtacks. That might be, or little cup hooks. I don't know. We got to do something with the stencils because uh, I got some fun ones I want to use. I want to show them to you guys. Okay. Um, you can also make your own stencils. A lot of ways to do that. And uh, that's very rewarding because, uh, and stencils don't always have to be out of plastic. You can just punch shapes out of paper and you've got a stencil. So there you go. Uh, let's see, the next question is Susan Carvey. Oh, no, that was that. That was where do we get the stencil. Uh, moving on to uh, For the Love of Paper. Um, good morning. I'm so curious about what that notebook is beside you with the tabs. Oh, that. You caught that, did you? Let me show you what I'm doing. Um, okay, I ordered. Good eyes, good eyes. Um, I ordered this old ledger. And it is very fat. Oh, you can't see anything. I know it's too close. It's very fat. Okay. I think it's got like, yeah, four, uh, 469 pages in it. And it was empty. And I thought, oh. And I thought I was going to um, use the pages for journal, uh, for, you know, fundals and just interesting paper. But what I ended up doing uh, is I put all these tabs, just self little, this is what, you know, you do for yourself, like I was supposed to decorating stuff for everybody else, I just, white paper, white cardstock, and I stuck it and made tabs, but these are for the, all the different things uh, that I, projects that I have going on, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, uh, newsletter, Amazon shop, po podcast, I have two, did I say podcast? No, maybe not, I don't know, Etsy, uh, at Paper Up Post website, one day, uh, um, uh, Facebook and um, mer my merchandise shop and there's digi kits and other things in here but um, that's my new um, like uh, everyday journal where I'm just capturing my ideas and the reason why I used it um, you know as opposed to making one for myself or anything like that I grabbed it and I thought it's strangely look how big it is it's a big journal um, it's light strangely light look at I'm holding with just my thumbs and I, I do like light easy books to use and it gives me a lot of I can spread my writing out and get my ideas down and there's something old and worldly about it that I just fell in love with and I thought oh you must you must be mine you must be mine and uh, it became my everyday journal yeah so that's that's what was happening and um, let's see what else here a few here there's some errors where my printer was making some lines so I'm going to remove the good ones and I'll just figure out what I'm going to do with the other ones. We'll do something with those. Um, so basically some of these are duds. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So if it's a dud I pull it out. <laughs> I think sometimes like a piece of dust or something will come down inside the printer and uh, then you'll get the lines and then you have to clean the heads and stuff like that. So um, that's what happens with those. So these just get put aside until I cut them all down. Um, okay, so let's see what uh, tree stencil question from the travelers. I think I answered that. Okay, Sue Barton asks, Hi Pam, what is the size that I need to cut the folder down to? Oh, okay, she's looking at the video called Let's Make a Fun Folio uh, to Hold Ephemera for Junk Journals um, or Happy Mail. 
and uh, really totally up to you. Um, you could actually just use the um, manila folder the size it is, but if you find it too big or too uh, uh, clumsy in that size, you can just, just cut it down to whatever you like. Um, you know, I probably just cut the, the tabs or the edges off so it was easier to work with. And some, uh, you might, you know, depending on whether you have a letter size or a legal size manila envelope, that might make your decision. But if you want more space to store things, lean towards a larger size, then you'll have more, um, more uh, space to work with. Isn't this fascinating watching me cut this? It seems so slow. It's much faster on my uh, my guillotine cutter over there, but you know, I want to give you something to watch. <laughs> okay. And uh, all right, so what do we have now? We have, um, I need to get my thumbs back in action. Driving me crazy here, driving me crazy. Um, okay, Elizabeth Royko asks, I think I'm going to try to use an old shower liner to cover my workspace. Brilliant idea, Elizabeth. Maybe I'll just cut a piece. What do you use? Um, I have used an uh, old shower curtain. I also use the, um, um, you know, those rolls of plastic that painters use to cover things? That You'll have that forever. You buy one roll and you've got tons of it. And um, that's another thing. I've also just covered my uh, table with paper. I, I've done it with newspaper. I've done it with... Um, um, I had this bolt of white paper that I, I just decided at some point I'm never going to actually use it. So I would roll the white paper out. It was very long uh, roll and it covered the whole thing. And then I would do my, my crafting, my spraying, all that. And then the white paper underneath had a really cool um, um, images on it, really cool prints all over it. So I ended up cutting it out and saving it and, you know, uh, decorating it more and everything got used. That was awesome. But uh, yeah, absolutely a, uh, a shower curtain, uh, shower liner, anything like that makes a great craft space cover because, you know, we get a little messy sometimes. It happens. And let's see what the next question is. Sliding down. Oh, so you tell me if you, if you, is this something enjoyable that you like to watch every once in a while? Maybe me answering questions or is, is that better done in the, the podcast form? Right now I, I uh, occasionally do answering your crafty questions in my podcast, but I know not everybody listens to the podcast. So um, I could occasionally do one here on the channel if that's something that you find intriguing. Um, okay, Deborah Marriott asks, how many papers do you typically put in each signature? Uh, I would say after many years of trying different things, and you will see videos of me trying different things, um, between uh, 10 and 15 is my normal comfortable range. Um, I lean more towards 15 I if I want it to be a primarily a writing journal per signature or I uh, more closer to 10 if, if it's going to be a heavily decorated journal. Well, the other thing that comes into play are, is how thick are your pages? Are you using regular printer paper, copy paper? Those numbers would apply to like regular printer paper or copy paper. If you're using thicker paper, you're probably going to want to use fewer pages per signature. Um, like thicker uh, scrapbook paper or thicker old book pages just because it's going to bulk up uh, what you're making that much faster. And you'd be surprised how fast the bulk up happens. I'm telling you, you're just like sitting there like doing nothing and next thing you know, bulk rama <laughs> Yep, <laughs> it happens. Okay, so now next question we have is uh, Linda Howe. Myopia Club Cherry Soda, soda, question mark, LOL. Myopia is nearsightedness, isn't it? Yes, you are absolutely spot on. Uh, I know, I know. There's some, I had a, a label, uh, an old label, a vintage label, and I guess it must have had the word myopia on it. How funny is that? Um, who knows? You know, I, I don't know what their marketing strategy was. Maybe if, yeah, you know, you just have to look at it really closely to make sure you get the cherry one. Yeah. Oh, cherry was one of those things that I'm not supposed to eat. Yeah. Can you believe that? Cherry. I love cherries. And pineapple. I know. There was a whole bunch of things that I was not supposed to eat with that allergy uh, blood test. Um, my husband had like, like three things. He had eggplant, um, water chestnuts, and like weird stuff, you know, that you don't normally come across. And ginger. Okay, that would be, I would miss ginger. Uh, but I had like, I don't know, 27 different things I'm supposed to stay away from. And a lot of things I love. So, oh well, well there you go. Um, and, they, and they also tell you like, um, this, you should completely avoid this. You could probably have once every four days. So just occasionally. So you kind of know what's bad and what's really bad. It was helpful, you know. Um, okay. Oh, Deborah Sampson asks, I was wondering if you have a video on the torn bedsheet journal cover you are working on in this video. Thank you very much. Um, several people have asked me about that and, um, 
I do not as of this moment, uh, but uh, the next time I make a torn bed sheet journal, uh, journal, I will videotape the process of that. I think I was actually sort of experimenting it at the time, and I want to see if it would work, and I think it did, and, and it would be interesting for you to see the, the finished one now, which may or may not already be out by the time this video comes out, because I did just technically finish that journal, and... Um, um, I accidentally, now here's something when you work with white bed sheets, they can get dirty when you are uh, crafting. So if you are a crafter who likes to work with inks or paints or dyes and stuff like that, you might get a little splitch or two here or there on your white bed sheets. And I did, and then I had to work my way out of it. And I think it worked out pretty well because I just incorporated it into the design. And uh, I think it looks kind of cool. Uh, so I will show you that, or I have already shown you that. And um, um, but yes, I will, I will, of course, I'll show you how to do the, the bed sheet. It's, it's a very easy process and it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to use up a bed sheet. Okay, here we go. What else do we have? What else do we have? We have, uh, Coty Lagrange asks, what is the name of the black pencil, please? And thank you. Oh, you're so polite, Coty. Um, the black pencil is called an Aquarelle Stabilo pencil. I'm pretty sure that's the one I'm referring to because it's the only black pencil I really use. Here. here. There you go, Aquarelle Stabilo 804, was that 6 or, yeah, 8046, okay, um, it's, Stabilo is a German company, and this is a, it's basically when you, you draw on it, um, yeah, and then you get a little water, if you haven't seen this, I can't see it, draw on it, okay, get a little water, use a finger. you can use a Q-tip too, but it does that, see that? And that means you can go around and outline things and get that beautiful, dark, hazy look uh, to things. Steampunky, grungy. It's very fun, very easy to use. I would recommend getting at least a three-pack because you're going to... They're, they're a little soft-tipped, so you're going to um, blow through these pretty quickly. But they are so much fun. And um, got to love those. Whoops. Got to love those. I think... Uh, I was first introduced to those from Lori Marie Jenkins. If you haven't checked out her channel, check her channel out. But she is a big lover of the Stabilo pencil. And um, oh, that's that's where I found out about it. Yep, yep. Okay. All right. Here's my roses. Okay. Oh, um, we got next question. What's that? Um, oh, okay. So here is uh, Shannon Baker asking three a uh, few days ago. <clears throat> I always have to remember that the video is not necessarily going to come out at the same time, so I, I try not to do too many time references. I'll stick my foot in my mouth. I'll say, you said three days ago, but that was like two weeks ago. Um, yeah, and I'm trying to keep a backstock of at least two weeks just in case. You know what I mean? Just in case. So we shall see. Okay, here we go. Uh, can you do it with tissue boxes too? She is referring to the junk journal tutorial, how to make a book from a box. Uh, do it yourself junk journal part one. And um, I think I made that one out of a uh, cold ease lozenge box. And um, uh, I think you could make it with a tissue box, but you would have to form the spine. Uh, so you'd have one corner of the spine and you just have to maybe use a, uh, a bone folder or a uh, scoring board to get your second fold of the spine. But absolutely, a tissue paper box is beautiful uh, um, chipboard. And it makes wonderful covers. And if it, your cover is not thick enough, you can always uh, double it up if you need to. It all depends how thick your tissue box is. Uh, because some tissue box, that's pretty. Okay, just maybe fold that and make a little booklet or something. Um, some tissue boxes are thicker than others. You know what I mean? I mean, not all tissue boxes are equal. So, um, yes, you just... Uh, you. Remember, everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise. See, see me trying to get this? It won't move because I have a useless thumb. And uh, that's, that's the way my life is right now. Um, I could probably put on some different uh, uh, band-aids, but that would work. But these are going to heal pretty fast. But I just, I just, I just, oh, I'm stuck. What happened? Okay, there we go. Um, uh, I do like um, to have free thumbs. Boy, I really stuck my thumbs where they didn't belong lately. Okay, here we go. And. Um, Pania Fraser asks, <laughs> she asks, can you talk slower? You talk too fast and I like your speeding, but other than that, good work. Um, uh, um, uh, I totally appreciate that. Um, I think, 
Uh, no, I cannot. Well, I tack at my normal pace, and my normal pace is probably because I came from Canada, and we tend to speak more rapidly up there. But the great news is you are not shackled to my speed. There's a little button on your settings on your whatever device you're looking on that controls the speed of me. Yes, you have power over me. You can grab me by the hairs and say, slow down, Missy, you're babbling too much and too quickly. And all you do is you slow down the speed. You can, you have like four choices of speed, something like that. And you can slow me right down. And uh, then I will talk at a, uh, whatever uh, speed works for you best. So yes, you do have control over that. And that's a wonderful discovery. And the flip side of that, if I'm not talking fast enough, or you want to get through something a little bit faster, uh, you can also speed me up. <laughs> yeah. And you would just want to get to the point, you know, like um, get past all the foo-foo and you just want to uh, see the actual technique. You can just speed it up and uh, get to it like that. So that's a great discovery if you haven't discovered that yet. And um, so look for the settings. The little, I think it's like a little gear icon. It looks like a little gear. And then you click on that and then you open up the, um, the one that says, uh, I think it's called playback speed or something like that, or it'll, it'll just say speed. But it, it is a game changer. Yeah, let me tell you, you're gonna love that. The control of that, Panya, okay. Okay, next we have uh, Mary Depew. She says, this rocks. So do you just leave the papers stacked to air dry? Thanks, Pam. She's referring to want to rag dye uh, paper. This is so cool. Easy, fun way to make pages for junk journals. So that's the name of the video. And I was rag dyeing paper. That's a fun way if you don't have hours to um, uh, bake and, and air dry and stuff. In other words, your papers don't get as wet when you, air, when you uh, rag dye them. It's kind of like a rag rolling technique. So it's quick and easy. They're not as wet, so they dry faster. And uh, yeah, I will um, uh, take those and I'll just toss them across. A, I have this big table in the kitchen. I'll just maybe put some towels down, toss them across, open them up a little bit and let them air dry. Those uh, air dry pretty quick. You can also toss them in the oven to air dry. Just make sure you keep an eye, never leave the oven site because um, paper can catch fire. And uh, how do I know? Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've ignited a few, but the lower temperatures, you have to leave it in there a little bit longer, like 200 or something. Um, you, you know, it depends on your oven. But um, if you go for the higher temperatures, yeah, really don't leave. You shouldn't leave it either way, but um, just keep an eye on it because it will catch fire. But it's a faster way to dry it. You can also hang them from strings and paper clips, oh, not paper clips, like clothespins, things like that. People will do that. And um, uh, once they're all dry, if you want them nice and flat, I take a, a big wooden um, cutting board and I put it over the stack and then I put a couple of cases of water on top of that and in about two to four hours somewhere, and I do usually leave it overnight, but you take the cases off and the a board and they're nice and flat. You don't have to iron them. It's a, it's a, it's a very, uh, I wish I could do that to my clothes. Yeah. <laughs> So um, there you go. Where we on time? Okay, well, okay, we're getting pretty good here on time. So I hope you had fun. Um, yeah, I apologize for the thumbs, but you know we're working with what we have and we're moving forward because there's always something we can do in the crafting world. If you, even if you have two thumbs tied behind your back. So thank you for joining me. And um, on my videos, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. My uh, podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, I am... Oh, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, make sure you do that. It's a free monthly emailed newsletter, and you get a free digital image, a checklist of supplies, note from the bookmaker, junk journal tips, updates from me, and now the new page ideas list uh, will be all at the bottom in the freebie section, so check that out. And also... Um, uh, I have an Etsy shop where I have, uh, when, I, when they're ready, I have junk journals, I have journal bundles, and I always have my vintage digi kits, which are printable downloads, and if you don't have a printer, I have a print and mail option. Just click on that and read the instructions. It's very easy. All you do is purchase the print and, print and mail option, and then you supply me with the names of 10, 10 digi kits. You don't need to buy the individual kits in addition to the print and mail. Just supply me with the names. I only need the first two to three words. Just either email that list to pamathepaperoutpost.com or send 
send me the list in Etsy message and I will get those off to you right away. And I have an Amazon shop. Oh, I also sell fundals. They're all collections of old and interesting papers, um, old checks and ledgers and, and postcards and receipts and hand dyed papers that I make and also collections of uh, vintage and interesting book pages as well. And they come in packs of a hundred fun things. If you're a historian or a collector, you might find some interesting pieces in there. And also if you've never felt or held the old papers, you might really enjoy that because it really brings a whole world, a whole essence to uh, creating things from scratch. It's um, merely an aesthetic I like, but you can make junk journals out of anything. Um, I have a Facebook group. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having fun doing weekly and monthly challenges over there. We're doing the one, two, three challenge right now. People seem to be having a lot of fun with it. So I'm so excited to see the things you make. You guys are awesome. Um, I, all my links are in the drop down description box below. You can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Uh, and also I have a merchandise shop. So if you like the phrase, um, create with reckless abandon or anything with the paper outpost on it, I got stuff for you. Yeah. Okay. So check it out. And remember that fun can be simple and sunshine. I apologize, but he is hanging out with my uh, sister-in-law having a lot of fun. And uh, apparently I am, I am uh, relegated to the level of dog meat right now. Um, yeah. That's not a good phrase, Pam. You should rephrase that. Okay. I'm, I'm relegated to the level of, um, um, li uh, dryer lint. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, there you go, folks. Uh, hope all is well. Happy crafting. And most of all, remember that fun can be simple. And create with reckless abandon. Look how many we did together. Thanks. I got some work done. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. Have fun. We'll talk next time. Bye-bye, guys.